Today we shall talk about compound parabolic collectors. Last time we were dealing in general with the constant collectors. It seems there is some confusion regarding the maximum concentration ratio. So, I shall go through that very quickly. We will consider a circular concentrator of aperture area A and a receiver area of A R So, whatever is the solar radiation that passes through the aperture area gets reflected or refracted and gets focused onto the receiver of area AR as shown. in figure 1. So, that shows the sun at a distance of capital R from the earth and of radius r small r and the subtended half angle is theta s. So, solar radiation emitted by the sun received on the earth is q S or area A A upon R squared by R squared sigma T S to the power 4, where sigma is the Stefan Boltzmann constant, R is the radius of the sun and R is the distance between the sun and the earth and T S is the effective temperature of the sun. So, if we write the emitted energy from the receiver to the sun will be A r sigma T r to the power 4 into E r s. If T r is the temperature of the receiver, it emits assuming it to be a perfect emitter sigma T r to the power 4 multiplied by A r the area of the receiver. and a fraction of it the view factor uh, will re be reaching the sun. So, that you have the ratio A A upon A R as R squared upon R squared times E R S. That is under the equilibrium conditions whatever is the solar radiation received by the receiver must be getting emitted back. So, that the temperature does not continuously increase. And if you assume maximum value for E or S can be 1, all the radiation emitted by the sun by the receiver can reach the sun nothing more than that. Consequently, you have A A upon A r max equal to r squared upon r squared equal to 1 by sin squared theta s. And if theta s is 0.27 degrees that is the half angle subtended then you have 
ए ए अपॉन ए आर मैक्सिमम इक्वल टू फोर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड दिस इज फॉर ए सर्क्यूलर कॉन्सेंट्रेटर we had a confusion last time whether it is for linear or concentrator which uh, i am was responsible for it because in uh, writing down we started with the derivation for the circular but somewhere it was mentioned as linear since it is sin square theta s and it will be 45000 that will be the maximum concentration ratio possible if you have a uh, circular concentrator now the question comes why is it not infinity can i not really focus on to a point the answer lies in the fact that sun subtends a finite angle no matter how small it is 0.27 degrees with the earth that makes the focus on to a finite area no matter how small it is consequently this maximum concentration ratio if it is a linear concentrator you can see the textbook by creeth and creeder uh, which is a very well written book a a upon a r max will be 1 upon sin theta s the max will be equal to 212 if theta s is 0.27 degrees Uh, though I am writing it as for theta s as 0.27 degrees, we have no option. That is the angle the sun subtends at the earth's surface. So uh, you have a possible 45,000 concentration ratio for a circular concentrator, and a possible 212 as the maximum for a linear concentrator. So this is what. Uh, was a bit confusing in the sense last lecture i was mentioning as circular or linear or interchangeably the whole point is circular concentrator has a higher maximum possible concentration ratio the maximum being 45000 and the linear concentrator has a maximum is possible 212 so no matter what your design is your concentration ratio will not exceed 45000 for a circular concentrator and 212 for a linear concentrator in other words the circular concentrator is not a point concentrator and linear concentrator is not mathematically a line concentrator it has got finite width no matter how small it is so we have considered the temperature distribution and expressed the useful energy gain from a concentrating collector we have taken as an example as shown in figure 4 a concentrator parabolic with a outer diameter being d not and inner diameter being di and of the receiver tube which the diagram is self explanatory except i have skipped a certain portion uh, to express the temperature of the fluid as it flows along the receiver tube uh, which is exactly similar to what we have in the case of flat plate collectors so i shall repeat rather i shall fill in that gap if m dot is the flow rate through the receiver tube 
and if you consider as shown in the diagram an elemental length of d x the temperature increase over d x multiplied by the mass flow rate and the specific heat is the energy gain while the fluid flows through the tube of length d x should be equal to my f dash the collector efficiency factor into concentration ratio times the absorbed energy minus u l into T f the fluid temperature times your area which is pi d naught into per unit length since d x is over here I will write it only p d l naught and if I transfer onto the uh, right hand side you will have the temperature increase due to a length of d x. So, if you integrate this equation exactly like we have done for the flat plate collectors, So, the initial condition T f equal to T f i at x is equal to 0. So, you can get exit temperature T f o by setting x is equal to L. You can notice that pi d naught into L length of the absorber tube is nothing but the area of the receiver, which also can be re rewritten as Okay. So, this is in terms of the area of the receiver and if you put C r equal to 1, you will have the same equation we have had for the flat plate collectors. Now, just to be clear, area of the receiver will be pi d naught into L, where D naught is the outer diameter of the receiver tube. Now, we have already derived your heat removal factor should be equal to the actual energy gain, which is irrespective of the governing equations or the balance equations is nothing but m dot C p into T f o minus T phi. That is the temperature increase of the fluid multiplied by the flow rate multiplied by the specific heat. So, this is the heat removal factor and by max gain, 
which we have already explained in terms of T f i. So, we got f r is as m dot c p upon a r u l times 1 minus e x p minus a r u l f dashed by m dot c p. So, the whole idea of a uh, little bit of this repetition is to say that the area of the receiver comes to the picture and uh, whereas, in the case of flat plate collector uh, we do not distinguish between the receiver area and the absorber area which is exactly the same and we call A c the collector area. So, the solar radiation as received by the aperture area of A a gets reflected and gets focused onto the receiver of area A r and when we consider the increase in the temperature in the receiver tube it is the A r that matters that is consequently leads to the heat removal factor being a function of A r being expressed in terms of A r. So, you now you have the conventional flow factor defined as f r upon f dashed which is nothing but m dot c p upon a r u l f dashed times 1 minus exponential minus a r u l f dashed over m dot c p. So, the flow factor is again in terms of the non dimensional flow rate which is expressed in terms of A r in the case of a concentrating collector. Once again uh, if you look some books you will have that the absorbed energy I thought I should give a clarification over here I b r b times w minus d naught rho gamma tau alpha beam plus I diffuse d naught tau alpha diffuse upon w this is the solar radiation absorbed per unit area of the aperture. So, w minus d naught instead of w which is the width of the absorber is due to the fact there may be a shadow cast by the receiver tube onto the aperture area and in this can be rewritten as i b r b times 1 minus 1 upon c r times rho gamma tau alpha direct b plus i d upon c r times tau alpha diffuse. So, this is what you have got in terms of if you consider the shading by the receiver tube onto the aperture plane. And in many instances, if uh, the concentration ratio is high, maybe 5 or 10, it becomes negligible, and consequently, AR, of course, is pi d naught L to reinforce the concept. So, your FR will be m dot c p sorry this we have already done it r is pi d naught l. So, if i t if 
is the solar radiation per unit aperture area then i t times a a should be equal to a aperture this is the direct component i b r b plus receiver area a r times the diffuse component this is shading by the receiver on aperture neglected. So, consequently I t should be equal to I b r p plus I d upon C r that is the received per unit area of the aperture. Okay. So, it receives I b r b that is straightforward, but a fraction of the diffuse radiation that is directly collected by the receiver should be included in order to estimate I t. Only thing is we are basing it on unit area of the aperture. So, it is to be construed that I d upon C r is the diffuse radiation that falls on the refer receiver referred to unit area of the aperture. So, it follows the absorbed area should be I b R b the radiation received multiplied by the optical factors rho gamma tau alpha direct plus I d upon C r multiplied by tau alpha for the diffuse component of the solar radiation. So, we expressed basically the clarification regarding the concentration ratio for a circular concentrator and the linear concentrator and subsequently I have also included the derivation of the outlet temperature from of the fluid passing through the receiver tube of a concentrating collector which is necessary to evaluate the heat removal factor and the flow factor. Subsequently, we also said that there are two ways of uh, expressing the uh, solar radiation per unit area of the aperture. Some textbooks include the shading by the receiver tube onto the aperture plane, so that it will be W minus D naught. Some do not. If uh, C r is uh, 10, 5, that will be a small factor and the absorbed energy finally is expressed per unit area of the aperture as the direct radiation received multiplied by the uh, optical factors plus a fraction of the diffuse radiation, the fraction being 1 upon C r, where C r is the concentration ratio and tau alpha d is the uh, transmitter subsurface product for the diffuse radiation. We also have had a, a brief introduction for what we call compound parabolic collectors. Now, if you look the equations that we have been uh, discussing or arriving at for the concentrating collectors, it concentrating collectors dominantly take 
the direct radiation plus a small fraction of diffuse radiation. So, you have got a gain because you track the solar collector with the sun's path or the sun's rays and direct radiation falling on the aperture can be enhanced no doubt, but you are losing a 20 to 30 percent even on a bright day of diffuse radiation because if the concentration ratio is high the diffuse fraction captured by a concentrating collector will be extremely small. So, the issue has been can we do something uh, a design of a concentrating collector which has a concentration ratio. So, that the solar radiation falling on the receiver is larger intensity and uh, it does not lose because the receiver area is small, uh, but also accepts diffuse radiation which may be 30 percent of the total radiation. The other thing is disadvantage on cloudy days a C C may give you Q u 0 if you have a very cloudy day since it does not accept uh, diffuse radiation the useful energy gain may be almost equal to 0. So, Winston professor Winston as we have given the reference is 43 that you can see in the companion notes and uh, he conceived the so called compound parabolic concentrators. Whole idea is to have concentration may not be very high but enable receiving diffuse radiation and simple tracking. You may recall that we discussed five cases of tracking simplest being east west axis with one single adjustment per day such that phi minus beta is equal to delta. The next one that phi minus beta you keep on changing depending upon the time of the day still the axis being east west. Of course, the other three deal with the north south axis and a perfect tracker of two axis. So, if you have a simple tracking and then the concentration ratio is not very high uh, we may get away combining the advantages of a flat plate collector mainly of accepting diffuse radiation and minimal tracking yet providing a higher temperature working fluid that is being delivered by the concentrating collector. So, I have shown the picture of a compound uh, parabolic collector basically it consists of the solid lines or uh, let me uh, redraw the 
these are two parabolas rather part of two parabolas this will be continuing like this this will be continuing like this. So, if this is parabola 1 and this is parabola 2 or uh, this point over here which I will call C and this one B C is the focal point of parabola 2 and B is the focal point of parabola 1. So, you have got a point on parabola 1 which happens to be the focal point of parabola 2 and the point B is the focal point of parabola 1. And you define if you cross join like this two theta a, where theta a is the half acceptance angle. It is called the acceptance angle. Any radiation, solar radiation coming beyond theta a shall not be reflected from parabola 1 to parabola 2 or parabola 2 to parabola 1. In other words, only those angles that are within 2 theta a shall be accepted by the concentrating collector and will reach eventually whatever is the focal point B or C as the case may be. So, I also have shown the coordinate system in the direction of x and the direction of y and uh, you have got the origin O. So, in nutshell, the two segments A B and D C are parts of two parabolas one and two. A D let us go back and see. A D is the aperture or oh, can you show the figure 7 of width w. You can refer to the figure. Then the axis of the parabolas are oriented in such a manner that the focus of parabola 1 is the point C and the focus of the parabola 2 is the point B which we have already mentioned. And uh, the angle is theta A to theta A which we have set. Then the area concentration ratio C r w upon w 1 upon sin theta a. So, you can see w small w is the width at the the focal point distance will be at small w the concentration ratio per unit length 
you can express simply as w upon small w. And with the coordinate system which you can see in figure 7 right you can take a time little time to look at this picture and copy or do whatever. You can express coordinate y as x squared upon 2 w small into 1 minus plus sorry 1 plus sin theta acceptance angle theta a. And the focal length as per the figure is O B. O is the origin where the parabola 1 and parabola 2 they have the axis I mean vertex of the coordinate system. simple trigonometric calculation will show you that O B will be equal to W by 2 times 1 plus theta A. So, the points are C and D once again I will show you the figure. C is the focal point of parabola uh, 2 and B is the focal point of parabola 1 whatever and those coordinates are given by for C you have W cos theta A the x coordinate and B by 2 times 1 minus sin theta A as the y coordinate and for the point D the coordinates are w plus w times cos theta a and b o 2 times 1 minus sin theta accept angle multiplied by 1 plus 1 by sin theta a whole squared. So, you know the coordinates of the point C and D. So, basically for the purpose of design you have got two parabolas identical in shape, but a part of parabola 1 part of parabola 2 placed in such a manner the focal point of parabola 1 will be the base of what is included of the parabola 2 and vice versa. So, now the concentration ratio h upon w height to the width which again I will refer to figure. So, the total height is h as shown over here that is between the points b to a or c to d it looks like i, but it is h half 1 plus 1 upon sin theta aperture times cos theta a which is nothing but 1 by 2 1 plus c 
times 1 minus 1 by c square to the power 1 half. So, that c should be the concentration ratio which we are normally referring it to as uh, c r, but nevertheless there is no confusion as far as this is concerned. So, if you compare surface area to the aperture area which is nothing but w l that should be equal to 1 plus c. So, this is established by Rabel of MIT and the details you can have uh, from the solar energy journal of 1990-1977. So, if you have the acceptance angle before reaching the absorber surface that can be expressed by 1 upon sin 2 times theta a a surface by w l minus 1 minus sin theta a times 1 plus 2 sin theta a upon 2 sin squared theta a. Well, the that is an ex approximate expression, it is approximate. Exact expression surface area upon the aperture area W L will be sin theta a 1 plus sin theta a times big bracket cos theta a sin square theta a plus log 1 plus sin theta a times 1 plus cos theta a upon sin theta a plus 2 plus 2 sin theta a to the power 1 half and theta a times that should be a plus cos theta a over here okay and this is over here minus root 2 cos theta a by 1 plus sin theta a to the power 3 by 2. Now, I would uh, urge you to take these relations as they are existing. What should be the surface area to the area ratio in the case of a compound parabolic collector? It is expressed in terms of the geometric factor, the angle of acceptance theta a. 
So, uh, you can refer to any book including uh, Duffy and Beckman by Professor Duffy and Professor Beckman and uh, you can if there are any slight differences in the plus minus signs you can correct it though uh, I believe uh, I shall include a companion notes as far as uh, the equations is concerned or concerned and uh, you can have a look at that in case uh, my quick writing has some mistakes it can be corrected. Now, you have got a compound parabolic collector, this is parabola 1, parabola 2, does not matter whether we called 2 and 1 the other way around, this is the focal point of 1 and this is the focal point of 2. Okay. So, I may have an observer with a tube and a fin like this. So, this will be my aperture area effectively and this will be sort of my receiver area which we have called W times L small w times l right the point is parabola 1 and parabola 2 should be inside reflecting okay so in respect of this arrangement I have a ray it should go over here because this is the 2 1 focal point of 2 and focal point of 1. Similarly, any ray that is coming on to this after multiple reflections will reach the focal point of 1. right? So, uh, depending upon the height, length etcetera, how many reflections it will be having. So, people have found rho effective should be related to rho of the surface that is the reflectivity of the surfaces to the power m, where m is average number of reflections. This is sort of found out to be about 1.4, 1.5, right? Uh, how the fraction is you can easily imagine if you consider a large number of rays and then some of them may be having 2, some of them may have only 1 and the average turns out to be 1.4. Then the significance of the acceptance angle any ray coming beyond this will have a multiple reflection and get out of the compound parabolic collector. Consequently, the theta a is called the acceptance angle. So, solar radiation within theta a only will be reflected, re-reflected and goes to the concentrating point 1 or concentrating point 2 and then transfers the energy to the fluid. So, 
acceptance angle so that is the significance of the acceptance angle so that uh, you will know that any solar radiation ray coming beyond that will not be focused onto the focal point 1 or focal point 2. Now, so this has got let us say advantages are simple tracking say mode 1 what we have considered as east west horizontal axis with one single daily adjustment. Okay. Then it accepts diffuse radiation because whatever enters through capital W width should reach also the uh, receiver area AR and reasonable concentration like maybe 3. Now, if you go for a very high concentration ratio with a so called uh, compound parabolic collector, then your acceptance angle will become less and less. Consequently, it will not be accepting the uh, a lot of solar radiation entering beyond those angles. So, something like 3 is ok which is good enough for 120 degrees C let us say uh, low pressure steam. At a reasonable efficiency maybe let us say 40 or 50 percent. Okay. And this also has got lot of demand particularly in textile industry. So, you got a reasonably efficient collector without going to three glass covers and a selective coating through the flat plate but one single daily adjustment you do a compound parabolic collector which will give you a reasonable ratio of uh, 3 or to 3 to 5 concentration ratio which is good enough for generating low pressure steam up to 120 140 degree C with a reasonably high efficiency of 40 to 50 percent and the applications are plenty particularly one mention I am making is the textile industry. So, everything is so nice and uh, there has to be somewhere uh, some hitch in this. So, this is one of the very successful designs, but a high accuracy of manufacture is needed. This is not to say that uh, uh, we need not have high accuracy for a flat plate collector or a regular concentrating collector, but the issue here is if you have got imperfect reflectors, it may have multiple reflections and get out and do not reach the focal point 1 or 2. So, you need to have a good accuracy in this optically for the compound parabolic collector. Otherwise, this is a reasonably uh, a quite a bright idea uh, to have a low concentration and at the same time produce a reasonably efficient low pressure steam or whatever is the other fluid. So, this is what we have done in the concentrating collectors. First, we considered the several modes of 
tracking and then the theory of a concentrating collector through a parabolic concentrator and then to avoid the disadvantages of a concentrating collector to combine the advantages of a flat plate collector we a suggestion by professor winston had been a uh, compound parabolic collectors which are also commercially successful and uh, they are parts of two parabolas one focal point will be at the base of the other parabola and vice versa uh, that leads to a concentration of about uh, 3 4 5 whatever one likes to design and then you can have a simple uh, this tracking mode that is only a east west horizontal axis with one single adjustment. So, this expects is expected to be very promising and uh, quite a few installations are based upon the Winston collector. The slight disadvantage or the concern should be the high accuracy needed in the optics. Otherwise, the rays will not be reflected and going on to the focal points, but they may get out of the compound parabolic collector. That is it. Thank you.